Hey everyone, this is Dr. Casey Johnson. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I know you're going to love today's episode with Lauren Purnell. Lauren is doing some amazing work, so I'm excited to have her on to share a story with you guys. If you've been loving the Unlock Wellness Podcast, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. The Unlock Wellness Podcast is now on Patreon.com. Patreon is an amazing site that allows you to support your favorite podcasts. You can learn more by going to patreon.com slash Dr. Casey Johnson. Also, be sure to follow me on social media to keep up with the latest podcast episodes. The best way to connect with me is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My username across the board is at Dr. Casey Johnson. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. You can also check out my website at drkaseyjohnson.com. It has all of the past podcast episodes and more information about each guest under the Listen tab. While you're on my site, also be sure to check out the Shop tab where you can check out my first book of my Healthy Children's Book series and learn about the Unlock Wellness Project, which supplies a wellness bag to a child in need for each book purchased. Thank you again for listening. I hope this episode leaves you feeling inspired to start making positive changes to your health. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Lauren Purnell. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Lauren Purnell. Lauren is a holistic health coach. She's an expert in self-care, especially when it comes to stress management and meditation. She's an author, a podcaster, and is just doing so much positive work. So I'm just really excited to have her on to share her story. But Lauren, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to have you. Oh, Casey. Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm honored to be on your podcast because I see all the dope work you're doing and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I get to be part of this club too. So (laughs) here I am. Yes. I appreciate that. But you're also doing some amazing work. So I'm excited for you to get to share it with everybody. Um, But before we jump into it, just let's jump into your backstory a little bit. You know, first off, where you're from and just how your health and wellness really looked looked like at a, a younger age. Oh, thanks. Okay. Well, first I am a Harlem resident and I have lived here for about 12 years, but I'm, I was born in Xenia, Ohio. Um, I lived in Kansas, Baltimore, Philly, Chicago, and the list kind of goes on. So at first I was moving around, um, with my family and things like that, but I, I got so accustomed to kind of being transient, um, just because my dad was, in athlete in the athletic field, and we moved a lot for his job, and you know things can change um, pretty quickly when it comes to like teams and all that kind of stuff. So, I I kind of had got, had the routine of moving around and kind of not really getting um, getting settled in one place and was kind of always looking for the next adventure. And that was something that I found like, oh, okay, Lauren, um, in my late twenties, you know what? You can't, this isn't like a good lifestyle to sustain. And I was really like searching for this home base. And I found that in New York here. So that's where I've been just doing my thing. And I, I love it because I feel like I can kind of reach all other areas of the world from this home base. And my health journey has just been really, um, it's been an evolution in so many ways. Uh, I grew up mostly um, it, like in, a, in an extremely healthy household. Like I said, we played a lot of sports. Um, athletics was a big part of our life. My mom was a nurse, so she really tried to make healthy meals. I actually didn't, I didn't even taste um, a box of um, box mashed potatoes until I was, I think I was like 25. One of my (laughs) friends had them. So like everything was made from scratch and it was like, again, this super health conscious family in a way. Um, my mom definitely did the best she could. So that was something that was instilled in me. I really love to cook, but I kind of, you know, I also struggled with eating disorders as well as, um, I had two herniated discs. I also was dealing with like adult acne and things like that. So it's like, everything was amazing. And then like things just started crumbling down and I had to really take my health and wellness into my own hands, um, and my healing into my own hands. And it's, 
like I said, it's been this amazing evolution to learn about so many different modalities, to connect with so many like just vibrant and positive people like yourself. And it's been something that I've actually been able to use to help um, others heal themselves as well. So that's, you know, kind of it in a nutshell. Right. No, that's, that's amazing. And I mean, how old were you whenever you decided that you really wanted to flip the script and start making some changes? Well, actually, um, I was in, I had finished my undergrad. I was working as a youth counselor and I had a coworker who was this really great guy. He was um, young. He was very active and he had actually just um, been diagnosed with um, type two diabetes. And he was like the picture of health. And I would see him, he sat across from me every day, prick himself and test his blood sugar and do this. And I just felt like that cannot be psychological. Like what is that doing to your psyche aside from everything else? And I just, you know, really felt for him. So anytime we would have office parties or different things, I really looked out for, you know, his dietary restrictions and things like that. And I would always try to bring healthier options. And, you know, I was always passing along natural remedies to him and different things like that to help him along his journey to just be his, the healthiest that he could be on his own without having to, you know, um, use like insulin and different things like that. So, um, one day he just said, why don't you do this for a living? And I was like, yeah, right. This job doesn't even (laughs) exist. So like, that's not even a thing. And he was like, I think you can get paid to do exactly what you're doing with me every single day. But, and I just like, I Googled it. I found the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and it was really a wrap from there. And I was already, you know, I was very aware of my own um, kind of, I guess, what whatever, like my own ailments in a way. And in, with IIN, you um, also get a health coach while you're going through um, classes. That's so cool. it was really cool for me to kind of be able to explore, you know, some of my own issues and also work on my confidence and thinking like, oh, I have to be perfect to be able to help someone else along their journey. Right. And I'm sure that was like a super nice surprise because you go in thinking it's going to be mainly with the nutritional, the nutritional side of it. And all of a sudden, like you're jumping into the mindset and just a body awareness, just, you know, all around like mind, body, spirit. So, I mean, were you interested in that? Like right away, did you feel like that was where you were supposed to be at that exact moment? I definitely knew like, okay, this is the path, but I just didn't, my, my, thing was the the business side. So what happened was, I guess I just, I started really getting into the whole aspect of having food heal you and mm-hmm. what you put into and on your body be healing and beneficial as opposed to just being something that you're fueling yourself with or for the moment and really thinking about and being more conscious of not only what I'm putting in my body, but what I'm putting on my body. So I've always been into like, Uh, beauty remedies and spa treatments and different things like that. And um, while I was uh, in um, attending IIN, I actually was working on my own adult acne with natural products. And I started experimenting and making and using food in my products and finding all the benefits of different ingredients and things like that. And I was able to heal myself and also used... um, more of a mental um, cleanse in that in that way. When um, I think it's really important when I work with clients to not only identify you know what outside triggers they may be dealing with, but also what they're um, constantly telling themselves. Like, what is your mental conversation, and you know what's the voice inside your head telling you, and how is that helping or you know kind of restricting what you're trying to do for yourself. Absolutely. Because I mean, everybody has a story and, you know, people will be like, oh, I'm a, I'm a shy person or I'm this or I'm that. But it's honestly, it's not. It's just something that something over time you've just accepted and like you continually tell yourself that and until you're like aware of it and that you can really break the cycle. So, I mean, is that a big thing? Well, first off for you, what was probably the biggest thing that you kind of had to the biggest story that you were telling yourself that you had to break free from? Oh my God. (laughs) The, okay. First of all, it's not singular. It was plural. 
there was so much um, just like toxic dialogue going on in my head. I was, you know, like a lot of people who are really trying and striving to be our best every day, our mental speak is really rough on ourselves. And that's the first thing that needs to, to me, if we're going to get anywhere, like let's think about what these limiting beliefs, what did you hear, you know, as you were growing up, what did people constantly tell you about yourself or about the way the world works and different things? So for me, I actually realized that I was expecting to, I wanted to be different, but every day I would expect for myself to be the same. So, um, I planned it, it, it came down, um, with both my skin and also, um, when working with like my back issues, I realized that someone could, you know, invite me out, let's say three weeks from now. And I would think to myself like, Oh God, that's not a good space. There's not a lot of seating. I don't want to have to stand that long, but I wanted, my goal would have been to be healed by then yet I'm planning to still be sick and I'm planning that I'm still going to be in pain. So I had to really start to kind of flip the script on myself and be like, okay, plan to be healed, plan for, to look in the mirror and see clear skin, plan to be able to go jogging with or hiking with your friends. You know, don't, um, basically just, again, don't, want one thing and then my actions are doing a complete, uh, the complete opposite. So that was something that I had to get in, into my head again about expecting. Um, and when it came to just like eating healthy and, and with the whole like eating disorders and different things like that, um, it was really in my sophomore year in college when my best friend confronted me and said, listen, I know you're not treating your body right. I know that this is going on and what can I do to help it? Because in the way that I felt in that moment was like, okay, someone like finally knows the secret. Like, it's like now this isn't, I don't have to keep this to myself. And what I, I also, you know, um, what have been involved in different, um, you know, therapy and things like that through, throughout my life, um, since then, but it was really that turning point that I was able to kind of be like, okay, first of all, let's work on again, my internal dialogue. What am I telling myself? Um, and really changing the way that I see myself because, you know, you have a completely different perspective of you than the world does. And most of the time it's a lot more harsh than anyone is even, you know, thinking of you. Well, we all see like those memes, right? That it's, um, it's like, if you talk to other people, the way that you talk to yourself and your inner dialogue, like you would dislike that person a lot, right? Because you don't speak to like the way you speak to yourself is so negative and you would never, ever talk to people like you talk to yourself whenever you're in a really negative space. So no, I completely agree. I would have slapped the shit out of myself. Like, I mean, I would have, I don't know what I would have done. Um, if I ever encountered someone now, now I'm completely removed from that. And I'm like, so on this wave of, you know, just loving myself so much that, um, it not only feels great on the inside, but it shows on the outside about, you know, just, and again, with my actions and different things like that. And I just, my whole goal is really to help people be their most authentic self, because I feel like when we're our authentic selves, we're our most comfortable, we're our most um, in tune and on purpose and also just enjoy, you know, when I can really just feel like I am accepted and loved regardless of, you know, what I'm doing, if I'm just standing there, just me being authentic and the energy that I radiate, you know, um, being able to be comfortable in that space giving others the permission to do that and also the gift to hopefully just get that little glimpse of themselves how i see them you know if i if it's like if you could only see yourself through you know your best friend's eyes or your husband's or wife's eyes and just it i i feel like it would be this life altering experience and i feel like the closest to that is being able to just be comfortable and have permission to be yourself no matter what. And in that we have so many gifts that we can share and, you know, just so many things are, we're able to really just get past all the funk sometimes that we put on ourselves. And we're really able to just like shine and, and just be, feel like we're enough. Definitely. Definitely. hundred percent agree. I love that. I mean, you do with your coaching, like you have a, like a big emphasis on stress management and 
self-care just overall like as far as things like um meditation and this other natural things that you you know you throw in the mix did that all get started at the same time as you're learning about all of this whenever you were in school or was there a resource that kind of pushed you in that direction or like how did all of that increase as you started uh, coaching people uh, first of all, your questions are so insightful and just so wonderful, Casey. Oh. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I actually, this is, it, it's all built on itself. And again, that really goes back to me just honoring what I'm feeling in the moment and, you know, what I feel like I'm being called to do. I I know that I'm extremely self-aware. So if there's something that I like, I'll see something on TV. I'll hear it on the radio. Somebody may mention it to me. I'm like, okay, I know. Like, I'm going to go look this up. I'm going to see there's something here. And um, when it came to meditation, meditation was something that I used in visualization to heal my, um, my back issues and as well as my skin. But mostly that was, that was kind of a quick thing and super easy. The back um, took a while. And again, that was just, that came from exploring all, so many of these healing modalities to try to remedy myself. And in that, I started really getting into meditation and kind of like cultivating the power within me. And once I realized, um, I would re- read a lot of books and Louise Hay writes a book, um, about it's called you can heal your life and she uses affirm different affirmations for different um ailments in the body to heal it through you know your subconscious and your energy and different things like that so that's when i really got into into meditation and when i came out up with the idea of the meditation mixtape it was really because i heard something on spotify that was kind of like what i was looking for but not exactly and then in that i created what i was looking for so that's basically how my products come about that's how all of like my coaching tools it's like what would i need if i were in this situation or what do i wish existed and then with that i just create it no i love that though because you've actually lived it and then you can also help, I mean, because, you know, whenever you're telling people to do something that you haven't experienced yourself, there's, there's some disconnect there. And I think whenever you've lived it and then you're helping people, you can just be more real, more authentic. Like, I mean, obviously like you are. Um, so I just think that's really important. And, you know, you may, you mentioned your mixtape, which mm-hmm. I love and I, I, I mean, cause it's so, I mean, it's so different and it makes it very approachable for people who probably may not check that kind of thing out, right? Because there's, there is a stereotypical person that is like a yogi or meditates or just into that kind of stuff. So I think it just makes it very approachable and cool and current. So, um, yeah. So I mean, do you want to like go into that and, and just talk about exactly what your what you do with your mixtape? Yeah, sure. Think, um, well, you know, for a long time I worked for 11 years, I worked in social services. So, and I worked mostly with at-risk youth. So I'm around amazing, like brilliance every single day. And I just saw that there was such a lack of resources trickling down, especially to a lot of these young people who had experienced so much trauma in their lives and were kind of really, and they were really, really open, really eager and able, and but just looking for ways to heal themselves and different things. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it all starts, you know, on an energetic and emotional level. And a lot of these things manifest into physical um, pain and disease. So at the at the root of it, I just really wanted to help um, young people be proactive in taking care of themselves, and um, that included me because I feel like you know again moving around so much and just I'm very adaptable, but I've been around a lot of different you know people and cultures and things, and I realized that. I love the world of wellness, but it seems so foreign to so many. And because of, you know, whatever it's, you know, insurance doesn't pay for certain things. And I just, there, I would bring carrots and hummus and it would be like this huge deal about what I was eating for lunch. Like every day it was a spectacle about what's Lauren doing? Oh, what are you drinking? What are you? (laughs) And I realized that there was such a thirst for knowledge in this you know, in this subculture, especially in New York City. So I just really tapped into what I was looking for first and then saying like, okay, again, how can I make this healing modality 
ex- accessible to people who aren't going to seek out the traditional way of meditation. And I've heard so many times people saying like, I don't know how to meditate or I can't, or this is, you know, it's boring or I don't. Okay. And I'm like, okay, what would I want to hear if I were like, like, you know, what, what words of encouragement do I need? Um, what reminders would help me and just really getting into it. So um, when I created it, I actually started recording it on my phone, like through my headphones. And, you know, I really believe in like that are anytime you have an idea to do something, the universe really comes out to support and just being open and aware to the way that it, it happens. And it just so happened that I was dating a guy who, a music producer, and I took the idea to him and I said, do you think I could, you know, get some studio time and record in a, and it was just like this brilliant thing and in project from there. And That's I just, awesome. I'm so excited to come out with part two and, you know, continue to just use my voice to help heal and um, inspire and motivate. So that is a, a super extremely shortened version of how it kind of came full circle. But And especially, you know, again, the love, my love of music. And I just feel like we, there are so many different ways like that you can meditate. There's so many different ways that you can exercise and, or eat healthy. And it's really about everyone personalizing and figuring out what works best for them. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, just using like your talents and your interest and creating something that you actually love. And that's when like you put that out into the world and that's when you can really make a change because it's more real and yeah, no, I love it. And it's, it's funny to me, Lauren, cause you were talking about how, um, you know, you were talking to the guy the the one that had type two and, um, you didn't know like what you were doing was a job, but it seems like you've always been in some kind of coaching position. Like you're good with that. Cause you were talking about, you worked with, uh, you know, you were a youth counselor and then, you know, social services. I mean, like, have you always had that kind of personality type, just more nurturing and just like you said, super self-aware? Oh yeah. I feel like in a way that I've always been the one people come, like it can be a stranger, whomever needs it can come and talk to me or learn from me. So I'll be at the beach hanging out, like trying not to look matronly or anything. And like (laughs) kids will come up to me and ask me to teach them how to swim. And I'm like, that's a little bit of a, like, that's a tall order, you know, and I'm just chilling. And, but of course, you know, I engage and I do different things and uh, and people just they're again it to me everything is energy and they're drawn to that and you know I'm open and sometimes I have to lately I've been really trying to draw better boundaries and different things because I see sometimes that when I'm exuding you know energy and different things to one project it really or someone that um, you know other other areas can kind of like fall short and you can't serve from an empty vessel so. Right here I am just like learning again and evolving and again, helping also my clients to learn to draw their own boundaries. So yeah, but I've always been in some sort of, again, if you just look at your life and you really become aware of what you're drawn to, again, these little things that we're so good at that we wouldn't consider skills, but they just come naturally to us. And I, I think that's just so important for people to, again, how to tap into kind of their own authenticity and live in a, in a position of power. Exactly. Or like looking back when you were um, like super young, it's like when you were little, like what were you really into? Because we kind of forget those things over time. It's like, oh, were you super artistic? Did you used to write a lot? Did you, you know, like those things really mean a lot. Like those, those natural instincts as a young kid that kind of get pushed to the side over time because they're not realistic or, you know, don't make money. You know what I mean? Like those things are yes. so important. Oh my God. No, even you saying that I, uh, I would be five years old. My grandmother used to have, um, uh, her, her closet in her bathroom had all these lotions and different things, you know, like grandmothers do, they have all these things and ingredients right. and potions. And I used to mix them in bowls and like make facials for myself. I was always into spa treatments and making, you know, what the, whatever it was, not only just using it, but like mixing things together to make it more potent or, you know, extra moisturizing. So that was definitely something when I started, you know, my product lines that I I look back upon like because when I first started selling products, I actually was just organizing for other women. And at the time I was living in Chicago and I 
thought, okay, I've been using this one woman's products from, and she was um, sourcing them from her farm. But it was really hard to get the products because she didn't do any business online or anything. So like, I always had to go to her, drive over there and blah, blah, blah. And like, what would she have available? Who knows? And all this (laughs) stuff. And it was just like, no, but people need these. Like, this is amazing stuff. We, everyone, you know. And so I thought, wait, how many other women are like making beautiful, you know, like in wonderful ingredient filled products for people that would be so beneficial to them, but they just aren't really getting into the right hands. So I Googled just like natural products around Chicago and I emailed four different women to start. And I met them for I met with them for coffee. I got to know what their brand was about. I made sure it like kind of fit the criteria of the things that I was looking for, you know, like all natural, that they actually hand make it and different things like that. And then I told them that I wanted to get like a tester of each one of the products that they wanted to sell. And I hosted parties. And then I would tell people about who made it. I would tell people about the benefits of the product and you know why it's great. They could test it out, smell it, and then they would put their orders in. So now all these women were getting like a whole bunch of different orders from and reaching a whole new audience. And that's as far as I wanted to take it because all the whole creating the product seemed really difficult and like time consuming and just like you had to know way too much and all this stuff. I just rather buy it. And eventually that evolved into me, like seeing that there were holes in some of the things that I wanted, like, oh, well, I wish someone would make a, like a soapless body wash or something like that. And sure enough, I started making and mixing my own things. And then, you know, my line, I've actually had like three different phases of my own line since then. So since like 2012. So, you know, it all builds on each other. Right. What what are the main products that you have? available right now um as far as like the like the skincare okay so i have a christmas mask which it's basically it just leaves your skin feeling like a present like christmas morning (laughs) and um it's a clay mask where i also use um organic lemons raw apple cider vinegar um activated charcoal and himalayan pink salt to detoxify to remineral mineralize your skin and um, also just help create, um, like a smoother complexion when it comes to like any acne scars or anything like that. And just like brighten your whole face. Um, I'm, I also have the velvet, which is, um, just a face moisturizer. And right now I'm offering, um, soul glow, which is like a body oil. It's again, a whole bunch of different oils, jojoba oil, olive oil, um, almond oil. I'm trying to like think of all the ingredients off the top of my head, just a whole bunch of amazing moisturizing oils (laughs) that I'm like, I can't just choose one. We need every single one of them. And um, I'm also selling the silk pillowcases, which are really good for any hair type, any skin type. Um, The reason why silk pillowcases are really important because if you're laying on cotton for eight hours, a lot of, I mean, cotton is made to absorb, absorb moisture, which is great for some uses, but when it's, you're sitting there for eight hours and it's drawing the moisture out of your skin, it can really dry and your hair, it can really dry it out, cause wrinkles and different stuff like that. And I'm really into this whole reverse aging movement. So it's really great for, you know, um, anti-aging and not having your hair break off and, and just being able to let your skincare products like your moisturizers or whatever you're putting on before you go to bed really penetrate and work with your skin. No, that's awesome. And like just a you know quick note, you know, if you're listening and maybe like skincare is like that's not kind of your thing. And it's it's not just about looks. Like whenever you're using these toxic products, it affects every aspect of your health. Like when you're using super high chemical lotions and soaps, that affects you like all levels, even down to your cells. And that affects how your body heals, even your thoughts, your mood. It affects literally everything. So whenever you make switches like that, um, it's not obviously it's going to help appearance wise too, because when you do that, it helps, you know, decrease aging, but it's really helping decrease aging of your actual inside as well, which is really cool. And I think just needs to be pushed out there as much as possible. There's so many bad chemicals in some of these products. Oh yeah. I mean, anything that you put on your skin topically is going to be in every 
organ right. and your bloodstream within 26 seconds. Crazy. So it's just like, oh, okay. You know, where it's like, well, I always say like, what do you eat that? And people are like, no, it's harmful. It's poisonous. I'm like, well, you're, you you're essentially you doing the you same are. thing. <laughs> yeah. Basically it's there. Right. Check your gut. Or like so, it'll, it'll be just like, um, oh, well, I only use it once a day or it's not that much. But when you do it day in, day out, it builds up and it, it really is a lot. I mean, I just think of it as someone that, like if you are a captive and someone sp- had to spoon feed you the like the toxins that you're putting oh, in your okay. body once a day yeah. and they were like, come get your toxins <laughs> and you had to like go and eat this. It's like, it's only once a day, you know, it's like, <laughs> honey, let's get real. Yeah, no, I agree. So I know I love what you're doing with that. And and let's talk for a second about the uh, the books that you have out because you have a few and um, I'm excited really to to jump into all of them. So yay. Okay. Well, my first book actually, um, it's called, well, I, it's called Fucking Crystals Man, um, <laughs> a, a Beginner's Guide. And really that started because I met this amazing woman um, in Chicago. She really helped me to um, tap into my own, in, you know, u- utilizing my own intuition and different other, you know, like healing tools such as crystals. Um, and a lot of people would ask me and they would really expect me to know what all these different crystals benefits were off the top of my head. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just buying them just like you. I am trying to figure this out. So I figured, you know what, let me just make a really quick, you know, coffee table guide, super easy picture book that lets everybody know what the benefits of different stones are and kind of like gives an array and a variety of whatever you're looking for, whether it's, um, you know, to have better sleep or to get in touch with your, you know, spirit guides or um, even amethyst is great for respiratory health. Um, there's great, wonderful stones that help calm anxiety and insomnia, diff- different things. Um, so self-love and all that kind of thing. Uh, so I just, I really created it just so people would stop asking me. <laughs> and um, it's available via ebook on my website. And then I also just came out with um, Preserve Your Sexy Naturally, Self-Care for the Culture, Volume 1. Um, and that was, again, just something where I took I think it's um, the products in there, there's like 26 products. And those are just things that I incorporate currently into my everyday life and what their benefits are. And then I also put blurbs on each one about how I personally use them in my life and like little tips. Just again, very simple introductory because I think it's really important that people don't feel overwhelmed. And don't feel like, oh no, I don't belong here. You know, right. it's really, really, it's like my mission to let everyone know like self care is an inclusive space. And, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket. Um, it's really just important. And you can grab so many different benefic- beneficial ingredients right from your kitchen. And then there are a few different um, things that you can try at home, Um, just really simple activities and and different stuff like earthing. It's completely free. I talk about that in the book. You can go outside, walk in bare feet, um, you know, soil, sand, be float in water and all the different health benefits that just come along with that. So, and I also include a few services if you want to, you know, dabble and go out and try. Um, There are great things that you can do for yourself that are, again, you can find affordable ways to do these things and just really take time to be proactive about your health. And um, just, I think most importantly for so many people, especially because we are immersed in the wellness world. So our reality is like, everybody knows about this. You know, if I mentioned it in a, you know, group setting and people would just be like, yeah, that was so, you know, five years ago, but all of a sudden, you know, there are so many people that I realize like they've never heard of some, some of these things. Like people are like super obsessed with honey, for instance. And I'm like, every chance I get, I'm like raw, raw honey though. Like that's the only way you're getting the benefits, you know? And it's just like the little, little details that I feel like are, don't translate when some of this stuff hits mainstream media, um, that I really want to educate people on and help again, give people the power to realize like, Oh, I don't, 
have to go and, you know, buy $500 worth of product to do, you know, get the results that I'm looking for. All this stuff is right in my kitchen. And I think that's really important for people to know and start to, you know, take more responsibility for the things that not only they're putting into their body, but on top, on top of their skin. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, and I love how you are approaching that. And like you were talking about just making it inclusive and doable and approachable for everybody. I mean, even like, you know, like the name of the crystal book, like that makes it funny and more Mm -hmm. approachable because I mean, who like most young people aren't going to be like, Oh, like let's pick up a book about crystals and and learn (laughs) about energies, you know? So it's, it's just, um, I think it's just super valuable. So I love that. And you also have a podcast. So what kind of, are you, is it just you solo? And then you have people. It's, I actually have a co-host okay. and she is Stephanie um, Fuentes Kumnipa. She is the founder of Better Life Choices of New York. She's a life coach um, and actually a life architect to be exact. And her and I um, met on Instagram. We um, hung out once. Then I interviewed her actually from my website because I thought what she was doing was really amazing. Um, she felt like she would had had, you know, made some poor life choices growing up. And it was because no one told her how to make good life choices. And she created a nonprofit called Better Life Choices to help um, people do better for themselves. So I was like, um, you're inspi as fuck, like you're inspiring (laughs) and I need to talk to you and let the people know who you are. And, um, this was a few years ago and we actually just celebrated our second year anniversary. Um, I asked her on our second hangout, I was like, have you ever done a podcast? You know, it was first when I started really getting into them and listening. And I thought, you know, it would be fun to record one episode. And we are a hundred plus episodes now. Um, we it. record every week and we talk about everything. So it's really <laughs> not your mama's podcast um, because we're like, this is not for our moms to listen to. This is too much. So <laughs> they can't hear their daughters speak like this, but we try to give it to you, you know, the righteous ratchet um, balance and really talk about different ways. Again, not only to uh, heal yourself in, in a health sense, but also in emotional health sense and different things like that. So, and, and talk very candidly about our own, you know, journeys and experiences to hopefully inspire and help other people to get their, get on their own shit and like definitely live their best life. Absolutely. And it, and it doesn't, it help so much helping you stay on track too. just the people like the outreach that you have, whenever you have a podcast, it's just, um, you know, like when you like, they reach out, it just fuels you even more. And then I don't know, like just the, the reach from having a podcast has been super life changing for me. And I'm sure you guys feel the exact same way. Oh yeah. And I think too, it makes you want to do better. And right. so, because you know, like no one's holding you accountable in that sense, like, Oh, you don't feel pressure, but it's like, I want to be able to report to you and I want to push through or, or go the extra mile. So again, that I can tell you about it and hopefully that you do the same for your life because you genuinely care about others' well-being. And if you're taking time to listen to my podcast, like how, first of all, like flattered and just right. uh, um, like honored like and how- doing, doing literally anything, but they're taking yes. time to listen in. Yeah. So I just, I'm like, if you're, if this is, you know, how you want to spend your hour, let me make sure I make it worthwhile for you for sure. Right. No, that's, that's awesome. I love that. And like, how often, how often do you guys put out episodes? Uh, Every week, every Tuesday. Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'll put a link in the show notes. That way people can just go click and add. And um, yeah. So, so what's, um, I know there's a lot going on, but like, what do you have going on? in the future that you just want to put out there and share with people for people to have a, keep an eye okay. out for? Well, um, I feel like right now I'm really focused on, um, I'm actually creating a, a business. I'll, I'll just talk about it. I noticed that there, I feel like I want to do, um, it's called reform through wellness. And I really want to work to offer people in civil and social service jobs, um, a lot better, 
access to wellness services um, at at a super affordable rate and also like super quality kind of like healing services. So uh, my goal is to, you know, make the people that check you in when you're doing jury duty feel, find purpose and smile about themselves and, you know, get a whole bunch of extra self-care and self-love. So that guess what? They'll be smiling when they're going through your bags and they're, right. they'll be feeling good about themselves and hopefully ca- causing a ripple effect, not only, you know, throughout society in general, but throughout the different organizations, prisons, schools, um, hospitals, and different places like that, where I feel like people are really burnt out and um, just stretched really thin and, and not taught and, and supported in ways to help them really reach their full potential. And if you're happy and you're feeling good and healthy about yourself, it's not, it's going to not only reflect in your work, but in the way in your interactions and just all that day to day. So I really feel like, um, especially with the current political climate, I think it's really important for people who are in these positions who actually make up these organizations to feel better and um, operate on a higher vibration, to be able to raise the vibration of um, a lot of these institutions that we have. So I'm working on that. And I'm also working on something really cool with um, um, uh, other two ladies. It'll be revealed, but all I can say is Holistic Housewives. And I'm just really excited about it. Um, We'll be doing some speaking and It'll just be like, oh my gosh, I just feel, I'm giddy. I'm really, really looking forward to the fall, the harvest time, and like kind of reaping a lot of the seeds that I'm sowing currently. Absolutely. No, it's going to be amazing. And I, I love the project that you were just talking about. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, you're, it's 100% right though. I mean, we all, we've all seen this firsthand. It's like, how many times have you been somewhere and like there's somebody working maybe that's in, a, I mean, let's start with a really good mood, right? Like that impacts you and then you get into your car and you're a little bit happier, but like that we're like opposite end of the spectrum. Like you're going to pick something up, they're in an awful mood and then things go wrong and that puts you in an awful mood and you get in the car and it's, you know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Just, then the domino effect and it's like, then you go home to your family. It's like, are you, then are you in a good mood or a bad mood? And then that, that affects your interactions with them. It's like such a domino effect and it really is, is so important. Yes. And all these, you know, the feelings and the emotions are also, again, weighing on your immune health and different things. So it's like, and and again, the way you feel and the way, um, you know, pain manifests in your body in different ways and tension. So it's just like, it's all super connected. And it's, again, just like you said, that domino effect is real. So my goal is to try to really um, hope help people to be first of all aware that they can even, that they even have control over the way they feel and their emotions. Because a lot of people don't even think that they, that it's them, that they have any control over, you know, whatever they're putting out or, or letting themselves receive. So that's my, like this, this, for this next year, I'm really, really looking forward to making people more aware. And again, stepping into their own power. I love that. I love that. And yeah. So Lauren, what is the best way for people to follow you on social media or your websites or ways to find all of your products? That way, as you put out new things, as you do more amazing work, they can keep up and follow what you're doing. Okay. Yes. Well, everybody, you guys can follow me at Limitless Lauren um, on Instagram. I post a lot on my stories just about like different tips, different things that I'm doing throughout the day. Again, being super authentic. You can also find me and my products um, on Inspe, that's I-N-S-P-E dot co. And um, all of everything is there. You can find the mixtape, you can find my books, and you can also find um, Preserve Your Sexy Naturally Self-Care for the Culture Volume 1 on Amazon. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I'll I'll add all those links so they have them. And uh, yeah, so Lauren, just closing question that I ask every guest. But if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's been your biggest takeaway through your journey so far, but if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? You are enough. Right now, without anything else, without your clothes on, without your clothes off, with 
you know, uh, without that extra few hundred dollars in your pocket, without whatever you're seeking right now, you are enough right now and you are deserving and you're doing much better than you think you are. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect, Lauren. And you're amazing. And just thank you so much for taking time to come on. I loved having you and just excited to see all the amazing work you do. Casey, likewise, thank you. Again, I'm honored to be here. Thank you guys also for listening and just uh, letting me share my message and talk about the wonderful things that are going on. I really, really appreciate you and this platform. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Lauren. She's doing so much positive work, so be sure to give her a follow on social media to keep up with everything that she's been working on. You can find her social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes, but you can also find them on my website as well at drkaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So all of Lauren's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Lauren, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Also, be sure to check out patreon.com slash Johnson to learn more about how you can support the Unlock Wellness Podcast. Thank you guys so much again for tuning into today's episode. I hope you loved it. I hope it inspires you. And most importantly, I hope you take action.